Um, so we will now be speaking with two of Gomery's research board members who will share their thoughts on Gomery's contribution to the state of Florida. Um, research board members were nominated by the governors of the five Gulf of, uh, Gulf of Mexico states to serve on the board. Uh, today, representing Florida, as Dr. Caldwell said, we have Drs. William Hogarth and Richard Dodge joining us. Uh, Dr. Hogarth previously served as a director of the Florida Institute of Oceanography located at the University of South Florida's College of Marine Science. And Dr. Dodge is the Dean of and Professor at NOAA Southeastern University Oceanographic Center. Um, so if both of you can begin to share your cameras and unmute yourselves, we will go ahead and start with a uh, small question and answer uh, panel with the two of you. Uh, so my first question to you both is how has Gomery added to or changed the landscape of oil spill science in Florida? Well, I'll begin. Uh, I think Gomery has wisely invested in several large consortia who have engaged teams of scientists from all around the world who investigate a host of processes which include the physics of ocean currents, the movement of oil and dispersed oil, and the associated impacts from the wellhead to the water column on the food chain and on the marine ecosystem. In addition, uh, the Florida universities have worked together to promote science to the public in many different ways. And finally, these new collaborations will not end with the end of Gomery. New publications and partnerships will continue to grow and flourish for the benefit of Florida, but not only Florida, for the benefit of science, the nation, and even the world. So I'll turn this over to Bill now for his ideas on this question. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, this has been quite a uh, 10 years, I think, for all of us. And I think the Florida universities have, have really it's shown that they we have great scientists and great students in this state. And they, you know, that's what Dick said to follow up a little bit. We have done, the board has had to really struggle at times to choose the best proposals, but we want to make sure that we cover all aspects. So we had to look at the biology, the physics, and the chemistry as well as. So we want to make sure these collaborations will go wide. And so there's a lot of struggling there to get to them. But we, I think, we did a good job of making sure that all aspects of the Oil spill were examined to make sure that we could better understand it. And, you know, we're hoping that we don't have all the answers. We're hoping that some of these, uh, it's the money that's been left uh, for the uh, Centers of Excellence will continue this research for the next few years. Okay. Um, and so my next question is, what kind of science is being funded? Well, so go ahead. I'll start this and then I'll turn it over there. So I think uh, you know, a lot of money has been put into the consortium, but also individuals. So as you see the amount of money, which is unheard of for that much money to go, not much administrative for that. that. So uh, I will talk a little bit about two uh, today. And I think uh, you can see a slide here. One of them is the sea image, which uh, was set up at the University of South Florida. Is, uh, it's been looking at everything from basically uh, fish-wise, and everybody knows I'm a fish person, so most of you don't get me for saying too much about fish, but uh, uh, the Gulf is uh, the great fishing environment, both recreation and commercial. Uh, but the consortium here has been looking at the sediments and looking at fisheries, and was able to work in with the Hard Institute to go from Cuba all the way to Mexico, and had the opportunity to look at X stock, which is, is a building Mexico a number of years ago, which has given a lot of information. Then if you were to get down to really uh, understanding the impact on fisheries themselves, the recovery consortium at the University of Miami, I think it's done some really, really unique and fantastic work on uh, looking at the senses of smell and vision in the Mai Mai fish. Uh, and this is a important information. And I also look at the heart rate, the cardiac effects, these are really some, some things that have never been done for fishery before. And when you talk about dispersants, you need to understand that it affected the cardiac rate and other functions. So these have been two of the really important aspects, two consortium, but we had many, but there's a lot of great students. And so we think we have looked at sediments, we've looked at the water, we've looked at the flows, which Dick would talk to you about. And I'm going to Close, but one thing, one thing I would like to say is about one of the students. There's a lot of students, but Susan Snyder was at uh, uh, 
the University of South Florida, and I was there as the dean, and, and she worked on a master's, and then she continued to work. She had been working on fish bile to see what the aromatic hydrocarbons looked like in various species, how much they uptook, and how much, which would uptake the most and, and sustained in the body the longest, which may suggest some of how you look at it for the long term. And she has really done a lot of great work, and she just finished a PhD, and she is going to be continuing. She's got a job as a marine oil expert looking at the recovery and, and aspects and, uh, and the restoration. So we are really happy with her and advice now to the, to the federal government. So Dick, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Bill. And that's a great image of the student there. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, in addition to that wonderful work that Bill has described, there's been a huge amount of fundamental research on how the oil and the dispersed oil moves and moved, and that's on the, and in the water, in oil plumes, at the surface, and how all the currents and the tides and even hurricanes affected that distribution. And that's uh, really outstanding work has been done at the University of Miami Carthy Consortium. You see that on the slide on the left, uh, and you'll hear more about that very soon. Another important aspect of uh, some of the work that's been done has uh, been studied at Nova Southeast University, and that's my university, Tracy Sutton's group, and you're going to hear more from Tracy soon, has investigated what Chuck mentioned, the poorly understood uh, but very important mesopelagic community. And you'll see on the slide here a small member of that community, but a very scary one, and I think that's also Tracy's finger holding that member. Uh, this consortium has uh, previously redefined uh, uh, existing species and discovered many new species. I think they have a record of, of the number of new species in uh, the deep sea. Importantly, their research has shown that this mesoplasmic community, and Chuck mentioned this as well, remains depressed in abundance. Uh, it, uh, the mesoplasmic uh, is significant because uh, there's so many of these small animals, uh, they form a critical and important food source for pelagic predators and large marine mammals. And so uh, it's very important to understand the effects and ramifications of that community. So research continues on that aspect for science of recovery. So let's have the next slide. We talk a little bit, uh, as Bill mentioned, the students have been vital for this effort. Educating and training students has been very important and a fundamental uh, uh, Tenet, a question of Nick uh, Gomery's, where did the oil go? So here's a student, Kelsey Rogers. Uh, she was a PhD student at the Florida State and studied the chemistry of oil in Gulf sediments and particulates. She tagged the origin of samples according to known spills or according to natural seeps. And this information has helped identify where the oil from the Deepwater Horizon event settled on the sea floor. Kelsey and FSU are great examples of the multi-institutional nature of the Gomery Consortia. Their team was based not in Florida, but in another Gulf state, yet it was a great Florida participation. She's now a postdoc at the University of Copenhagen, illustrating the international aspect of Gomery. So uh, I think that's about it on my part for that question. What's, what's the next one? So the next question is, um, on a more personal note, what has Gomery meant to you? Well, I'll take that and Bill can uh, finish up. I was thrilled about 10 years ago now to have con been contacted by the Chief of Staff of Florida Governor Charlie Crist, who gave me notice of my appointment to the board. It was just a wonderful phone call. Comrie has really been uh, unprecedented in its scientific effort and with extraordinary funding and especially productivity. So I'm really honored to have been a part of the Florida Initiative and also the entire Gomery process which has had national and international impacts. So uh, that's my little bit of the answer. And over to you, Bill. Okay, thanks. Well, you know, I, I was uh, appointed by Governor Chris and I uh, think a little help from Mayor Baker. And uh, it's really been exciting because you're working with uh, 20 scientists from around the world. So it's and really outstanding people. And uh, it was happy to, to be part of this uh, this group to, to really look at this. Uh, the Gulf is so important to, to the state of Florida and I think and to the country that I think it never has been funded to the rate it should have been. And it was an opportunity, I think, to get some of the attention that it could 
it needed and deserves. And so uh, that was the thing is just to be able to work with such a, a, a outstanding group of people. And, and it really, as I think everybody said, it became a family. We worked awfully hard, but uh, it just became a family group and a lot of discussion, a lot of concern about the human health effects of which we, uh, I think, struggle with quite a bit in, in this process. Uh, so the, but to be able to look at the, uh, the, the effects of the spill and then had it affect the people in the, in the ecosystem and had it, if you could make some uh, decisions on what should be done better the next time, it will, that will be another oil spill if we continue to drill. So how can we do things differently and hopefully be less impactful to the, the public? So, and then I think the other thing is stuff. Uh, there was so much interest that you got an opportunity to talk to so many people, yeah, so many groups of people. I was amazing one time to get called to one of the, uh, all of the retirement homes here. And I was surprised when I walked in, I thought it was going to be very laid back. These people come in with their walkers and the canes and all of a sudden they were just going at me from every direction of why we didn't do this, why we didn't do that. It was just a lot of interest, but it was great to be able to talk to people and just to their concerns and work with them. It was so... It's been a great, great opportunity for me, and I really appreciate being appointed by the governor and the head of the board has accepted me as a fish person to work through this. And uh, I think Florida, last I want to say, I think Florida universities and Florida students uh, should uh, really be proud of what they've done. And I will have to say that I think USF joined, got the most out of this because we got Steve out of it federal government into Florida. So I think that was a great move from the state of Florida to get Steve Morowski here. So thanks everyone for the opportunity. Well, thank you both for joining us.